Good morning. It is Monday, September 28th of 2020. We're going to continue reading the story of Dr. Doolittle by Hugh Lofting. And this one has been condensed and adapted by Catherine Knight. Today I'll be reading chapter five. And what recently happened was a swallow brought a message from the monkeys in Africa and requested Dr. Doolittle make the trip to Africa to help them as many are getting sick and dying. So they borrow a boat. Um, the grocery store or the local store lends some food that they can pay back when they can return. So they set up and then they begin to embark on their journey. And we're going to read today about their boat ride. So chapter five, the great journey. Now for six whole weeks, they went, on, went sailing on and on over the rolling sea. They followed the swallow who flew before the ship to show them the way. At night, she carried a tiny lantern. So they would not miss her in the dark, and the people on the other ships that passed said the light must be a shooting star. I see they're carrying the lantern at night. As they sailed further and further into the south, it got warmer and warmer. Polynesia, Chi Chi, and the crocodile enjoyed the hot sun. They ran about laughing and looking over the side of the ship as if they could see to see if they could see Africa yet. But the pig and the dog and the owl, Tutu, were too hot. They sat at the end of the ship in the shade of the big barrel with their tongues hanging out, drinking lemonade. Dap Dap kept herself cool by jumping into the sea and swimming behind the ship. When they got near to the equator, they saw some flying fish coming towards them. And the fishes asked the parrot if this was Dr. Doolittle's ship. She told them it was. They said they were glad because the monkeys in Africa were getting worried that he would never come. Polynesia asked them how many miles they had yet to go. And the flying fish said it was only 55 miles now to the coast of Africa. In another time, a school of porpoises came dancing through the waves. They also asked Paul and if this was the ship of the famous doctor. Then they asked the parrot if the doctor wanted anything for his journey. Paul and Eugene said, yes, we are short of onions. There is an island not far from here, said the porpoises, where the wild onions grow tall and strong. We will get some and catch up to you. So the porpoises dashed away through the sea. Very soon they came up behind dragging onions through the waves and big nets made of seaweed. The porpoises bring in the onions up in their seaweed nets for them to carry on their ship. The next evening, as the sun was going down, the doctor said, Get me the telescope, Chi Chi. Our journey is, journey is nearly ended. Very soon we should be able to see the shores of Africa. And sure enough, about half an hour later, they thought they could see land. But it began to get darker and darker, and they couldn't be sure. Then a great storm came up with thunder and lightning and wind howled and the rain came down hard. The waves got so high they splashed right over the boat. So I'm looking out at land and the storm kind of coming up. Soon there was a big bang. The ship stopped and rolled over on its side. The doctor ran up from downstairs. What's happened, he asked. I'm not sure, said the parrot, but I think we're shipwrecked. Tell the duck to get out and see. So Dap Dap drove right down under the waves. When she came up, she said they had struck a rock. There was a big hole in the bottom of the ship, and the water was coming in, and they were sinking fast. We must have run into Africa, said the doctor. Dear me, we must all swim to land. But Chi Chi and Gub Gub did not know how to swim. Get the rope, said Polynesia. I told you it would come in handy. Where's that duck? Come here, Dab Dab. Take the end of this rope, fly to the shore, and tie it into a palm tree. We'll hold the other end of the ship here. Anyone who can't swim must climb along the rope till they reach the land. That's what you call a lifeline. So they all got safely to shore. Chi Chi and Gub Gub brought the doctor's trunk and handbag with them. But the ship was no good anymore with a big hole in the bottom. Soon the rough sea beat it to pieces on the rocks and the pillow's pieces floated away. They all took shelter till the storm was over in the nice drive cay they found high up in the cliffs. When the sun came out the next morning, they went down to the sandy beach to dry themselves. Dear old Africa, sighed Polynesia, it's good to be back. Just think, it'll be 169 years tomorrow since I was here. And it hasn't changed a bit. Same old palm trees, same old red earth, same old black ants. There's no place like home. There's some drying out in the sun on the palm trees the next morning. The others noticed she had tears in her eyes. She was so pleased to see her country again. Then the doctor realized his high hat was missing. 
It had been blown into the sea during the storm. So Dab Dab went out to look for it. And soon she saw it a long way off floating on the water, like a toy boat. When she flew down to get it, she found one of the white mice sitting in it. It was very frightened. What are you doing here? Asked the duck. You were told to stay behind in Puddleby. I didn't want it to be left behind, said the mouse. I wanted to see Africa was like. I have relatives there, so I hid and was brought onto the ship with the crackers. When the ship sank, I was terribly frightened because I cannot swim far. I swam as long as I could, but I got very tired and thought I was going to sink. Then the old man's hat came floating by, and I got into it because I did not want to be drowned. So the duck brought the hat with the mouse in it to the doctor on the shore, and they all gathered round to have a look. That's what you call a stowaway, said the parrot. Picture of our mouse in the hat. My conversation with the duck. Suddenly the monkey Chi Chi said, shh, I hear footsteps in the jungle. They all stopped talking and listened. And soon an African man came down on the woods and asked them what they were doing here. My name is John Doolittle, MD, said the doctor. I have been asked to come to Africa to cure the monkeys who are sick. You must all come before the king, said the man. What king? asked the doctor. The king of Jolinginki, and the man answered. All these lands belong to him. All strangers must be brought before him. Follow me. So they gathered up their baggage and went off, following the man through the jungle. So that's the end of our chapter. We will read tomorrow um, about this king that they're going to meet. So they had made to Africa. And their ship was wrecked, though, just off the shore. And they, but they all made it up their life. So I'm going to bring up the notes for those of you who are taking notes with me. Um, and put your name on your paper and the date. Uh, we read the story of Dr. Doolittle, chapter five. And first we learn that the swallow is leading, leads the way across the ocean. So she flies out ahead of them. And during the day, um, there's follow her. And at night she carries a lantern so they can see her to follow. And then as they travel along, they get close and a storm comes up and they hit a rock and the boat has a hole. Remember, they crash into it, they hear a bang, the duck swims down and checks it out. There's a hole and they're sinking. So they have to figure out now how to get to shore. Uh, one way is they do tie a rope off for those who can't swim, the rest swim, and they safely get everyone to shore. And when they go find the top hat that got blown off into the ocean, they also find a stowaway mouse, somebody who snuck on board without permission. And now they're on land and dry, and we are going to see the king. So we thank you for joining us today. We'll continue reading chapter six tomorrow. And thank you.